all. I'm not going to be real lengthy in my talk with you tonight. I'm simply going to play um, a show which we will watch together if you want to watch it with me. I watched this for about 40 seconds um, and I figured it would be best to do maybe two or three parts to this video uh, so you can see what's happening. And this is, um, this is, uh, I'll let it speak for itself and uh, we'll watch it together. Okay. I might skip uh, across the part of the advertising here because I don't feel like um, assisting Hogg, uh, Dave Hogg here and anything he has to promote. But anyways, I will give him a fair listen. Okay. And you can watch it with me if you wish. This is the Common Sense Show uh, starring Dave Hogg. Time to bring some clarity to my position on Sandy Hook. And it's going to start with an explanation and finish with a definitive statement. And I'm not trying to make enemies here. I'm just trying to clarify where I stand on this. And listen, some clown wrote to me today, and it was absolute clown. I said in the first piece we did today, when he was awarded $4 million to the one family, I said, I don't know all the particulars of the case. I don't know what Jones said or didn't say. I said, I didn't follow him. I don't, I don't look at InfoWars that much. And no insult intended. I just don't. And, and I was, I was distracted at the time and i'll explain all that here but it's time to set the record straight time to move on um nobody in that trial won today that's the one thing i'm going to say my heart breaks for those parents who lost those kids and if you're someone who thinks that there weren't kids killed well i think you'd better take a closer look my name is Dave Hodges. I'm the host of the Common Sense Show. We are the show that is freeing America one enslaved mind at a time. And uh, you notice here on this show, um, well, let me say that. Let me just tell you, first of all, we are brought to you by the best storable food company in the world. Yes, yes, storable food. We're going to go past this, about, folks. Worry about your food supply. I, I, listen, I was doing my work here. But you got to remember, I was just hitting my stride. I was not to the level that I am today with the production of work that I do. And part of it was because I was trying to save my property from the clutches of John McCain. Our property rights were eviscerated. We found out, they said, oh, you're too close to an Air Force base. That was BS. Um, the planes had to fly over a quarter of a million people just to reach us 30 miles away. But we found out that's not what it was. And we found out very clearly this was about uh, subjugating land so they could get us off the land and get our water rights. They were putting through a Canamex highway system as a build out 25 years from that date. And I don't know that we're done with these people. We're still having problems with the county who's still living in the past. But I was totally distracted in this battle. Now we won a pretty big victory um, right after Sandy Hook, but I was totally focused on working with the Goldwater Institute of Representatives and winning that case. I did not pay attention to Infowars at all. No insult intended, but I was doing, you know, I was writing an article about every other day. I had a once a week radio show. That's changed. I had no TV show and I wasn't on YouTube. So my presence was infinitesimal compared to what it is today when Sandy Hook happened. Uh, I remember I found out about it from a couple of my students. I walked in and uh, was on campus and a couple of students, did you see what happened, Professor? No, I was stunned and shocked. And this morning I said, I don't know what Alex Jones said or didn't say, didn't pay attention, didn't care. Um, I was horrified by the event and suspicious as we always should be. We shouldn't just accept mainstream media or the government's word for anything. In fact, they've lied to us so much, you'd be a fool to do that. But never did I once think that there weren't victims. Well, I, I said to this morning, I didn't know what Alex said. Well, I went and investigated today, and he did indicate that he thought at least some of these parents, from my understanding of what he said, were um, actors. And that's my term, but, you know, basically playing a role, and they didn't really lose kids. Well, they lost kids. 
And I have to disagree with Alex on that point. And he may have firmly believed that or had a reason to believe it, but I understand why the defamation suit was filed. I understand the trial. Former DC insider and U.S. major economist Jim Rickards believes that Sleepy Joe plans to retire the U.S. The trial. And we're going to set things straight here right now, okay? From the Common Sense Show perspective, there were victims. Uh, I disagree with Alex Jones, um, and so did the jury, so did the previous judge. But there are people who will remain so loyal to him, and I don't think you should question your loyalty. Alex has covered a lot of good things, but he does his thing. I do my thing. Um, I don't cover other media. And you know I don't have a history of taking on people that I disagree with in the media. We have some people in the media, the alternative media, that are totally compromised. I'm not going to lie to you. Uh, Ted Brewer has said that on my radio show, and Ted is 100% right. And there are some people I just distance myself from, and I won't have anything to do with them because I know what they are. There are some people that I just don't associate with just because we don't cross paths. Doesn't mean they're good, bad, or indifferent. And that's how I describe my relationship with InfoWars. I've had a good relationship with some of the people that have worked for InfoWars from time to time, but I've never had a discussion with Alex Jones, never been on a show, he's never been on my show, and that's just the way that it is. Okay, so here's the deal. My heart goes out to the parents and it did at the time it happened. I, um, regardless of a conspiracy theory, no conspiracy theory about what happened, there were 26 victims. I'm convinced of that. And I know I'm going to take some hits from the Jones people because they're going to say, oh, no, there wasn't. He proved it. Well, to my satisfaction, there were victims. Okay, so it's okay to disagree with people, and you can move forward. The amount that was awarded in the penalty phase was extremely excessive. And an excessive amount won't bring a child back. Now, listen, I saw the woman testify about her child. It was hard not to tear up. I felt terrible for her. But this excessive award of $45 million, I think it is excessive. Um, should he have been fined? Well, that's I'll leave that all up to you to decide. But I think you can see where I'm coming down on this. The judge's conduct was a flipping joke. And Alex's lawyer was pathetic. In fact, the judge, the only thing she did I agreed with, she dressed him down for being inexperienced. He was a clown show, too. This judge, this is what I saw this judge do. And those of you that support the Sandy Hook parents and support the lawsuit, you're not going to like what I say. But I'm telling you, I discussed it with uh, someone who's done some legal work for me. And he totally agreed with me. I said... Here's what I saw. I said, I saw the prosecutor question a witness and stop the questioning. And then the judge, and this happened more than once, the judge didn't just ask a point of clarification. The judge continued the line of questioning. Oh, wait a minute. Is she a judge or is she a prosecutor? She opened up the door for appeal. So those of you that are celebrating the verdict, and the award, well, you may have to think twice about that because I'm sure these are grounds for appeal. But if Alex is going to get anywhere, it won't be with the current attorney he has. And no offense attended, but when this judge was engaged in this kind of behavior, and this judge also told Alex that he couldn't talk about free speech, what? You can't talk about free speech? I had a real problem with that. This judge's conduct was uh, hostile to the Jones side. She was not impartial. She didn't try to be impartial. Um, I felt that she tried to make uh, uh, Owen Schroyer and Alex Jones look as bad as they possibly could. And I can only surmise she was doing so to try to increase the amount of the ward by preying on the jury's emotions. This judge was a joke. And I'm warning you people who think that justice was done today, this isn't the final word. And <laughs> um, what a clown show. What a tragedy. Now, I'm going to go back and I'm just going to say this. If Sandy Hook would have had police resource officer, those children would have a good chance to survive. 
the same in Uvalde, the same everywhere. You're never going to get enough guns off the street. You can ban all the semi-automatic guns you want, and you're not going to get enough guns off the street. If you don't believe me, look at New York, Chicago, and L.A., where they have the toughest gun laws in the country. That doesn't change a damn thing. So when we take a look at this, the only thing that will protect our kids in school settings is an armed policeman at the school. Now, if we took the $40 billion we're spending for other nations' defense and put it on America and protected our kids, you could afford to put about five cops in every school in America. I think you only need one or two. I don't know why it's so hard to grasp this point. Gun-free zones create victims. And Sandy Hook kids were victims of these failed policies. And regardless of what Alex Jones said after the fact, regardless, the event still would have happened because we didn't take the proper precautions as adults and guardians of our children. And I won't miss a point to ever say this every time we have a school shooting. 324 exactly since Sandy Hook. Okay, folks, I'm sorry to cut you off there. Now, folks, I watched this. I watched um, an excerpt of that trial. And we're now going to talk about what Hogg is talking about. It was the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. I said that about an hour ago when I saw this, and I'm going to say it again. It was the scariest thing I have ever seen in my life. Um, he's putting it correctly when he says that the judge was the uh, the DA. The judge was the prosecuting attorney. It was like it, it was like watching two wrestlers um, in the WWE uh, that were tag team. Uh, that he's right about that, but. Yes, he's also right that he was making Alex Jones look as bad as possible. That was true. That was not terribly hard. Um, Alex Jones made some mistakes. Um, one of the, the what I saw was that the producers of his show, he may or may not have been aware of it, I don't know. But they put a picture of that judge and some other judge um, with um, a, a kind of a, a, a fire burning in front of them. And um, uh, this isn't going to help your case at all. Um, in the scheme of things, that's not going to help your case. And um, yes, I know that this was bad. It was bad for Alex Jones real bad. And um, the problem Alex Jones had was that he did say some things that he got called out on the carpet for, as in he feels that uh, the powers that be that control um, dangers uh, that uh, to protect children uh, in the Department of Areas that Protect Children uh, he went on to say that he felt that um, somehow this judge may have been at least partially responsible for something uh, evil for the fact that she worked in this, which was not smart. Um, I, I agree with that. Um, it was not smart. But uh, uh, Hogg is right. There is clearly an appeal uh, that must go forward on this because it was so bizarre that I have never seen a judge. Uh, I mean, any of you that remember the OJ Simpson trial, that was a, a Japanese judge or a Chinese judge. Or I don't know what he was, but he was an Oriental judge. 
and he came under a lot of criticism for some kind of odd behavior. Well, he was perfectly straight by comparison to this woman. Now, uh, this woman judge. Now, the woman judge, to be fair, is a Democrat. Um, and from what I understand, what I could ascertain, because I had trouble finding this information, but I finally did find it. And uh, she wants to protect people by taking guns away. That's a big part. Now, I'm paraphrasing that. I might be paraphrasing that a bit, but certainly part of that, um, I think, is uh, pointing in the correct direction, although paraphrasing slightly. I think it is her great desire uh, to take the uh, uh, better than half a billion uh, guns off the street so that no one could shoot you because you simply don't have a gun, uh, criminals included. And um, you can see where I'm going with this. I don't know that to be a fact. That's what I read on the bio, the bio. And uh, she is uh, somewhere between 40 and 45 years old. She's listed as straight. And um, uh, being an American of full Latin descent. So um, that's all the bio on that. So what do I have to say about it? Um, clearly, the judge was trying to humiliate and uh, prosecute uh, the witness, which would have been Alex Jones. And the, the problem I have with this is that a professional judge who is not a political hack, because that's what this appeared like to me, is it was just a political hack judge. Um, you, you can't tell a, um, a, a defendant or a person on the trial that they must not lie. You can't do that. That person can lie if they wish because there are consequences to deal with that. But for her to talk to Alex Jones like he was under two years old, and if you think I'm kidding, I'm going to show it to you right now. If you think I'm kidding, you go ahead and watch this. And it's just, uh, it's just bizarre. It's just absolutely bizarre. So um, this is three minutes and 56 seconds. Uh, this is a reprimand of uh, the judge reprimanding um, Alex Jones. So um, you can listen to it for yourself. And um, we'll cut this video and we'll go to a part two. Uh, conjecture on part of the judge. This is absolutely, I'm not a legal scholar, but this is absolutely remarkable.
Just because you claim to think something is true does not make it true. It does not protect you. It is not allowed. You are under oath. That means things must actually be true when you say them. Don't talk. You understand what I have said. I do understand. You understand the instructions I have given you for your testimony in court. Yes. I'm not going to bring the jury back today. My staff is listening. They can let the jury go home. We'll start back up tomorrow. When you come back to testify tomorrow, one more time, no asides. You understand what I mean when I say no asides? Answer only the question asked of you. Do you understand what I mean when I say only answer the question asked of you? Yes. Okay. Do you understand you will still be under oath when you return tomorrow morning? Yes. To complete your testimony. And you understand that that means you must only testify about things that are true. That's all. If you don't know something, you don't say it. If you're asked about your opinion, you can give your opinion. But if you're asked to relate something to a truthful and a fact, it must be truthful and a fact. Not an assumption, not a guess, not an opinion. Do you understand? Okay, folks. Um, uh, there you have it, okay? Um, folks, I'm going to show you what the scariest thing is about this whole thing. And, um, it is frightening. Now, to a lot of you, this is going to appear like a slam dunk. And in some ways it is. There is a, a great deal of inappropriate behavior by Alex Jones, it would appear to me. However, I'm not there, so I can't really say one way or another, but it would uh, strongly appear that way. Now, what makes this so frightening to me, and it's the most frightening thing I have ever seen, the idea that the judge should reiterate over and over a simple uh, uh, a dictate or whatever it is that you want to call it or instructions to continually use her voice inflection uh, this trial this your feelings it was so ridiculous that this begs for a uh, a correction of some sort it's absolutely astonishing. It's almost like a WWE tag team event where we've got to figure out what's happening. Now, I'm going to show you what makes it uh, so uh, frightening. When you come down here and you look at these comments, there are 2,600 comments. As you look at this, each, and I've read about a hundred of these, um, each and every single comment is the same. Uh, the dude has been lying for so long, he probably can't even tell the difference between the lies and the truth. Love seeing a narcissist, sociopath, called out for lying and manipulative behavior. I have waited for years to see someone with more power than Jones say to him, don't talk. My favorite, just because you claim to think something is true, doesn't make it true. And on and on, uh, like a five-year-old being told off by his mom, priceless, like seeing a man that's used to getting his own way over and 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 over. I I went through about a hundred of these and I can't find one. Now, uh, 
I'm sorry, folks. I think I might have uh, screwed it over for you. So let me put it over here. Uh, sorry about this. I'm uh, trying to show you all of the... Sorry, I made a mistake there. I'm, I'm confused because I'm using the other part of my camera, which I never do. Uh, if you look at these comments, each, and there are hundreds, if not thousands, um, each and every single one is of the same genre. It's the same. Uh, it's over and over. I ran through about uh, 150 of them, and I have not seen one, not even one, that is of any different or any other, anything other than, you know what this reminds me of, folks? You know what it honestly reminds me of? I'll be honest with you. There was an actor named Andy Kaufman. And Andy Kaufman was the star of a show called Taxi. It came out in 77, I think, and um, it, or 78 or 77. It was a big hit. It was a huge hit. Had a lot of big names in it. And uh, Andy Kaufman um, had a lot of power on the show. And he was so bizarre and had such a strange sense of humor that what he did was... Um, he started going off on his own because he hated this idea of standardized humor with with laugh tracks and all that kind of stuff. He hated it. So uh, he started doing bizarre things like announcing himself the intergender wrestling champion of the world uh, because, you know, he wanted to wrestle women. And he would go into these talk shows and whatever he'd set up a ring and tell the women that they would get paid $500 if they could pin him. And then he raised it to a thousand and it, it, I mean, it made wonderful theater. And then when he finally decided to wrestle a man, he 